This is Superintendent Miller again with another episode of Riding with Rob. It's a cold, blustery Wednesday here in Bixby, and I'm joined by our city manager, Jared Cottle. Welcome, Jared, to Riding with Rob. Glad to be here. And uh, With no snow on the roads. That's no, ice at this point. Yeah, so far, knock on wood. <laughs> uh, but I know that uh, pr it's probably just as much fun to be a city manager during a winter weather event as it is a superintendent. It is certainly as exciting, I'm guessing. Yes. I know. Whereas uh, I get to make some people happy by issuing a snow day. Uh, for you, it's not quite the same experience. We, we, we don't get any snow days or, or a free pass, <laughs> so we just uh, to try to keep everybody moving as, as, as best we can hope for. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, I'm glad you joined me today. We've got a big election next Tuesday uh, for both the city of Bixby and the Bixby School District. But before we get to that, uh, I'm looking out my left side window over here and see Charlie Young Park and see some of the new renovations here downtown. And if you haven't been downtown recently, there's been a lot happening here over the last few years. And uh, Mr. Cottle, why don't you just kind of share some of the bigger things that have happened in the development of this downtown uh, river district? Well, it, it really has occurred in about three different stages mm -hmm. uh, and, and with three different funding initiatives. The first was four to fix, and there were some residual funds uh, out of the countywide uh, Vision 2025 vote, mm -hmm. the residual funds that allowed us to come in to uh, Charlie Young Park at the time uh, and, and reimagine that as an event venue. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we ran that parallel. It was the first thing out of the box because we had those, those funds already available. But uh, in the meantime, we had begun with the council to look at a master plan uh, for downtown. There's certainly mm -hmm. plenty of other uh, examples of success, or, or not only in Oklahoma, but other states, of what happens when you can go in and put that investment into downtown. We've seen that in, in other local communities. So uh, when the vision uh, tax was extended and, and voters elected to do that, uh, we had really looked at a, a, a the downtown and the river mm -hmm. as, the, as the main areas for investment, and voters agreed with that. And so we have proceeded with uh, bringing a streetscape project mm -hmm. that followed along behind the park. Uh, and since they were roughly about the same time, we were able mm -hmm. to merge the designs of those uh, to come with both the park and then the streetscaping in downtown. And uh, with that, uh, also updating our uh, development standards, architectural mm -hmm. standards for what we were looking for uh, in creating that downtown that would attract investment. And at the end of the day, that's, yeah. that's one of the things that uh, we see uh, provides a big community benefit is that investment. So as those tax dollars come in for that higher end commercial development, it certainly provides more revenue for the school system. Uh, it helps uh, local businesses, uh, it drives the economy, uh, and certainly helps local government because those, uh, those sales tax dollars uh, mm -hmm. help our, fund our public mm -hmm. safety and, and, and streets and, and all the things that, uh, parks, the things that we do, uh, the services that we provide as a city. So uh, with mm -hmm. that, the, uh, the city council out of our capital budget um, uh, over several years, put together some funds to renovate uh, our city hall complex. Mm -hmm. And so we did renovate city hall and the Dawes building, uh, really as an example of, mm -hmm. of what we were hoping that downtown would be. Uh, and uh, sure enough, uh, just uh, this last fall, uh, we had a couple of different proposals uh, mm -hmm. from some outside investors uh, who were looking at bringing uh, projects of close to $30 million uh, into the wow. downtown area. and. Uh, with that interest, we expect uh, one or two more uh, right. of those again to come in. And we, we really feel like uh, that kind of an investment certainly is good for all. Mm -hmm. and, and we want to do everything that we can uh, to encourage that. And it certainly, uh, if you build it, they will come, mm -hmm. has, has proven out to be the case, at least with the interest that we've had at this point. So, right. so, so we're excited about that. We're excited about downtown. Uh, and what that holds for the for the future of the community. And we are too. And I, I think what I want to commend the city on and, and you yourself is it's just the controlled and um, efficient manner that has taken place. It's not just encouraging growth for the sake of growth. It's the right kind of growth uh, for our community. Things that enhance the quality of life for our families 
and for business owners and I, I see the things that are happening here downtown and that makes me excited and you know our bond campaign is around this theme of building an extraordinary future together so I'm very happy to have the partnership with the city in all the planning that we do for our school facilities because they do they connect together which brings me to this upcoming bond issue uh, a performing arts center that it will be somewhere downtown, I'm not sure of the exact location yet, but will be about a $40 million facility, which is just phenomenal. And, and we've been talking about this for a long time, you and I, about the benefits that that can bring to our students, our band and choir and drama, and even our younger uh, performers, and in really giving them this world-class venue to perform and watch other performances and kind of get behind the curtain and see how these things come together. So we're very excited from a school perspective that we'll be able to, to work with the city in getting a use of that kind of facility because it'll be just a couple blocks from our high school, we hope, somewhere yep. in that area. But um, kind of what was the impetus for that for you and what do you see uh, that Performing Arts Center being able to do again, to generate commercial development downtown? Well, I, really, I see it as an extension of the conversations that we've had over the last several years. Just, just like you talked about, uh, the, the, the city's success really is the school's success. And mm -hmm. I say that over and over again, <laughs> uh, but it is absolutely the truth, that as the school is successful, so is the city. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the, uh, some of the incentive areas that we have for development, the, uh, the uh, you and the school board have, have partnered with the, the, mm -hmm. the city council to really help uh, build that better future, both uh, and, and increasing that tax base and making sure that we uh, can have a better quality of life uh, by generating additional outside investment. And, and that's exciting. And I, I see this as an extension of that, uh, is that I participated with the bond committee mm -hmm. and, and hearing over and over again, Performing Arts Center rise to the top of the list mm -hmm. of a lot of uh, the different groups uh, that were working independently, uh, brainstorming what projects should we did, need to do. And that kept coming to the top. Uh, and, and recognizing that came to the top of, of a lot of the list, but also recognizing the needs that the school had. Mm -hmm. uh, again, the needs are, are overwhelming, mm -hmm. and, and we understand that as a city, uh, but also recognizing the limitations in, in the school's uh, right. bonding capacity. Uh, took that to the council to talk to them about uh, supporting uh, the mm -hmm. school's needs and efforts in Performing Arts Center, and they were uh, happy to do that. Uh, and this, again, they. they we, we recognize that uh, in, in some ways we're almost like a university town, except it's, right. it's a high school. I mean, that's really how it functions. And so mm -hmm. uh, they threw, threw in their support to uh, pursue that. And, and so we retain an architect who's got a lot of experience in performing arts center to put together uh, what that would look like and what would our needs uh, be for this community. So that the school could certainly have a venue uh, that was up to par with mm -hmm. the performances and, and uh, that, that, that uh, the kids are, are producing here and uh, and yet not so empty for a lot of times. I think right. for, for both of us, efficiency and, and economy of use and how can we partner to benefit uh, both the school and students mm -hmm. here uh, as well as the community. And this seemed to be a good fit for that, uh, right. that, that uh, the school could use it as needed. And then rather than let it sit empty for the rest of the year, let's bring in some uh, performers uh, and, and, and outside uh, road shows, acts, whatever that might be that uh, the community could enjoy from an mm -hmm. entertainment venue and also let the kids participate. I think there's just a lot of different uh, avenues that we could take from production uh, mm -hmm. for events that come in that, that would involve all parts, not just strictly performance, but there's all the other uh, mm -hmm. ancillary support activities that go with uh, putting on uh, uh, large scale performances. So I, I just yeah. think there's a, a, a huge opportunity here that uh, uh, for both the students and for the community at large that just really right. help that, that quality of life. Yeah, and I, I see those ripples if this gets approved and we're able to build that down here. Um, the ripples of commercial development, obviously restaurants and places that are associated around those entertainment venues. We've seen it happen in some of our uh, neighboring districts where they built PACs mm -hmm. and you know the expansion around that. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited about this partnership and I one of the things again about the city it's not you're looking at this PAC as being not a revenue generator for the city necessarily but it, by extension the things that that kind of development that that brings and attracts to our downtown that will pay the sales taxes and property taxes and so it um, all kind of works together and so when we 
uh, partner together, which we want to do always with the city of Bixby, with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we really can do some extraordinary things together, building a better future for our students, for our families, and for the community. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And we want this to be a place where families come, they want to ra raise a family, they want to work, and they uh, want to stay here, and, and their kids want to stay here. Right. So, um, Mr. Cottle, thank you very much for joining me today. And uh, I'm excited for Tuesday. Make sure you've got that on your calendar, February 8th. These will be two separate bonds. There'll be a school, actually two school bonds, one for new construction and one for transportation. And then if you live in the city of Bixby, you'll be able to vote on the city bond as well. Well, thanks All for right. bringing me along. Okay. And, uh, we're excited for the future. All right. You can be driving a snow uh, snow or a uh, sand truck or something today? I, I, I will be morally supporting those that uh, <laughs> drive with, and uh, making sure that they have the supplies they need, but uh, okay. probably not uh, not my time behind the wheel uh, today. All right. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, that'll end this episode of Riding with Rob. And again, Tuesday, February 8th, uh, please make sure to get out and vote and support our community. Thank you so much. Thank you.